Hello and welcome. We're at week 20 of a 52-week Web Pro series on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to talk to you about Process Monitor. The Process Monitor is a powerful tool. Originally you may have heard of FileMon or RegistryMon or Reg RegMon and this merges the two together. It's a free, quick to learn and safe to run on production server tool that every Windows administrator should know. It's not to be scared of. In fact, that's what I want to show today is how easy it is to use, although it is extremely powerful. So first I want to show you a very easy situation where I can actually use this and see it in action. Just kind of to make sure I don't scare you off with the complexity of it. It looks overwhelming at first, but it's really not difficult at all. And so we're going to walk through. I'm not going to have too much fanfare on the advanced features. I just want to show how powerful it is to get to the point. Then I'll come back around and cover a bit more of the advanced features and tools. So let's jump right in. If I look at a situation here, I'm trying to set up contoso.com and look at this. Uh, I got an error. I've been trying to troubleshoot and figure this out. Now at first, so it says it's permissions related. So at first glance, it may seem that I have it set up correctly. If I go to contoso.com, my permissions, and if I go to security, I have system administrators, and then my app pool user, I'll cover this another week, contoso.com, has read permissions and I'm only doing a read operation so that you would think would be fine so why is this failing so let's start with process monitor but I'm going to close this first and use it assuming this is a machine that's never had it on I want to show how easy this is right from beginning to end and so what I can do is I can start with let's go to sysinternals.com and these are tools that uh, primarily Mark Racinovich had created and also with Bryce Cogswell years ago and they're used uh, extremely powerful and, and um, there's a lot of these tools many here and I'll cover some of these over time but process monitor is one we want to look at today and you can see it's easy to download it does have some help feel free to look through that uh, but I like going right here if I use it on a server that I'm not going to necessarily want to download and save it and use it once only yeah, let's use that situation so run process monitor and literally it just downloads a single file it's tiny it's about 3 meg and it's done so there we go I started already I already have the tool now I stop this notice if I, it starts running and this can even on a production server start to use up your memory and it, it is very chatty so I stop this right away so what I do then is I clear this and I queue up my test which is here in the background so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run it so I hit run I come back here, I refresh, so I've reproduced the issue, and I go back to process monitor and stop it. So now what I have is a test, a reproduce, of this issue while this is running. I've captured what I wanted to capture. And in this situation, an access denied is really easy, because I can do a control F for find, and type in denied, the word denied, and look at this, it jumped right to it. It shows I have an access denied on CINETPUB, www.root, and if I expand this out, I have, I'm going to have a bit more information. And then I lost my position. Let's hit that again. Okay. Let's see, expand this out. And, okay, it, it goes and goes and goes. So let's just double-click. And notice that it shows an access denied, and we're impersonating the user called the iUser and if I go to the actual process it's really running under this app pool user and impersonating under this this other user so here's really what's most important is the I user okay so what I've done is I've forgotten to add this I user here and this is the authentication for the anonymous user if I hit edit and notice it's using this I user so and I'll cover another week I actually recommend in most situations switching to this app pool identity but for now, let's actually just fix the access denied issue. So if I go to security, edit, I user, and uh, we'll give it just read-only permissions is fine for what we're doing, the minimum that's required, and refresh, and there we go. We have a winner. So in maybe two minutes or so, we were able to start with downloading, trying the tool, capturing it, finding the access denied, and solving the issue. You can see how powerful and clean this really is. Okay, now that we saw how easy and quick it is, 
Uh, let's now dig into some features a bit more. Let me reiterate, this is free and it can be used on production servers. Just don't let it fill up the buffer too much. Uh, you know, I mean, you could probably run it for a few minutes, but don't leave this on all night and or even for a couple hours. Okay, so let's look at some of the other tools here. The tool at first looks overwhelming. It's fairly complex. There's a lot to it. But the two buttons, or probably the three buttons I use the most is this one here, the capture, so this starts and stops, the clear, right here, and the filter, and the fine two, although I did that with Control F. So those are would be the four I use. And this filter allows you to filter for just particular things. For example, if we just want anything related to IS, we could say what process is W3S or W3WP.exe and we hit add. Now notice there are a bunch of excludes already here for us. That's just to get rid of the base stuff that we're really not curious about. Like process monitor doesn't even show itself, which is on purpose. So we've added that, the one in include. And now if we do a refresh, oh, okay, and let's start it, come back here and do a refresh. And so now, there we see, we have our W3WP, so everything for that particular transaction, and really it went to www, we can also see it had to go to the .NET framework, it's using the 64-bit, and we can see the registry keys that it's using as well, various registry keys related to INET info checking some so that's actually very very powerful to be able to dig in to a lot of different things here and there's so much more that you this is actually a lot cleaner than you usually find usually there's going to be a lot more entries on other places on disk it goes to you can see it traversing you're going to see not found fairly often that's fine uh, it's just seeing it does this registry key exist if it doesn't of course then it doesn't do whatever it's instructed here it'll go back to a default and notice that we have file and registry related operations and what I usually look for the most is just here in the path and the result are kind of the most important. But there are things, you know, the PID is really important, of course, the time and the process name. And then the detail can show you more details on the access that it's trying to get, trying to obtain, etc. Now, some of the shortcuts I like, let's say I don't care about the reg query value. So what I'll do is I can right click on this and I'm going to say exclude and see there's a shortcut for it. Now see if I right clicked on 2572 see it can do that as well and so let's do that. I'm going to exclude this let's exclude this and exclude this for example. So now I have just kind of this base stuff that I want and I can come back here and refresh one, two, three times and you can see what happens just at the file level in this case uh, and you can see also this is trying to go to its ASP.NET, so it goes to default.aspx slash web.config. It's just something the .NET does, gives us greater understanding on what's happening behind the scenes here. Now that right click trick I showed, what that's really doing is adding to the filters here. And you can see how it's added these excludes. It will save these excludes next time you come in, so if you close process monitor and come back, these are going to be here, so you're going, to, you're going to probably want to go in and remove those when you want to see them again. Another thing that's handy sometimes is the highlight. Usually I use the search to find what I want, but sometimes it's nice to actually have it stand out. So let's try our highlight, and let's use something here. This is the exact same menu at the top. Let's say the path contains, and you can see it has a lot of power. For example, less than, greater than, begins with, ends with, contains in this case. And let's say default aspx and we're going to hit OK and notice now it just stands out for us the default.aspx so if you have a really large output which is actually very common that you would then in fact let's actually drop this so now we start to collect everything and we'll stop it but you can see if you if we scroll down that it actually shows it's highlighted anytime default.aspx shows up. Now let me show one more example and I'm going to pause the recording here just for a second and set up the situation here in the background. Okay I'm back. Now I'm here at contosa.com and if I hit refresh I realize oh no my website has an error in it. I have two O's in Contoso. So what's that? Contosu? And so I want to fix this. So let's go here and I'm going to right click. This is my shortcut I like using on the site 
make sure I go to the right path. Sometimes people nest these really deep in the path structure, so I just ensure I get the right one. And so I go to default.aspx. Oh, look at this. It's not Contoso. It's Contoso. So why do I have a typo? And so it's not using the default. Let's double check this. Default.aspx. No. It still has that typo. Really odd. Why would it do that? This is the root of the site. Let me double check again. Contosa.com slash default.aspx. And I go into dubdub root and default.aspx has an error. Okay. Well, this is baffling me. So, process bond to the rescue. Let's see if we can figure this out. So, I'm going to go here. I'm going to clear this and clear it, I should say, and start a capture. Okay, so it's capturing. Come back here. I hit refresh. I come back to process monitor. Sometimes give it just a couple seconds, although it's extremely fast and doesn't usually get behind. I wait just a couple more seconds. Now I stop the capture and go to the top and let's search for default.aspx. Try to spell it correctly. And we can see right away it's going to the right path and it looks for the web.config. It's wondering if default.aspx is actually a folder, not a file. That's just part of ASP.NET. And oh, look at this. On this next line, I have inetpub root, and now it goes into site 2. That reminds me. I had set up a rule using URL rewrite to use a subsite. And so this jogs my memory and lets me know. Uh, but even if I wasn't the person who set it up originally, at least I know something else is in play that's causing this site 2 to be used instead. And in this case, the fix is to go to URL rewrite, and we say use site 2 folder. And this, just for this demo here, is running everything from site 2. So I remember that was just a test. Let's delete it. Yes. Come back and refresh. And we don't have the O anymore. And let's do a little bit of housekeeping. This site 2 we don't need anymore. We'll delete it. And we now know it's using the default from the root. So again, just two examples I've shown today on where, what process monitor, how it can help you troubleshoot. One was with the denied, which is really easy, very quick. And then even with an odd path, sometimes it can be used. And you can see there's a lot of lines to look through. Sometimes it can take a while to parse through and to really get a handle on everything. But if you want to understand what's happening in IS, become a real powerful administrator. This is a tool to make sure that you know and that you use well. So thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a great week.